Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Dr. Zina speaking. Today we'll be talking about what is the pleomorphic adenoma, causes, signs and symptoms, the treatment and the clinical presentation. But before we continue, make sure to smash the subscribe button down below for more and more videos. So here is a clinical presentation for a patient who is having pleomorphic adenoma. As you can see, the location, it's on the heart palate. So what is pleomorphic? Pleomorphic means mixed. So it is a mixed benign, benign means non-cancerous tumor that can affect your salivary glands. Which salivary gland? Your major salivary gland, which is the parotid salivary gland, will be affected. The cause behind it, patients who are being treated for head and neck cancer via radiotherapy, so they are receiving a high doses of radiation, they're more likely to be having such a condition, which is the pleomorphic adenoma at the end. So that is the number one cause. The signs and symptoms. The size is two centimeter, located either in the heart or soft palate, and the symptoms, it's painless, does not cause any discomfort for the patient, just the patient will complain that there is a large mass that is located on the heart or soft palate with unknown cause. So the, here's another uh, clinical presentation for a patient having pleomorphic adenoma. The size is two centimeter located on the heart palate. The treatment, surgical excision should be done immediately uh, because if left untreated, it will grow in size. It can uh, grow up to 15 centimeter, not only two centimeter, it can grow up to 15 centimeters. So we need to do surgical excision. So pleomorphic, it is the most common benign salivary gland tumor. Remember, most common benign salivary gland tumor. The parotid is the largest salivary gland and has an intimate relationship with the facial nerve. The facial nerve starts from the brain, travels in a long bony canal before coming out of the skull and passing through the parotid gland to get to the muscles of the face, thus controlling facial movement and expression. Once the facial nerve enters the parotid gland, it generally divides into two main branches called upper and lower divisions, and then into five other branches, which then subdivide into many smaller branches that connect to the facial muscles. Facial nerve branching is like a tree in that no two facial nerve branching systems are the same, and great expertise is required to be able to dissect the nerve, find all the branches, and protect them. The facial nerve enters the product in its deeper portion. Four-fifths of the gland is superficial to the nerve. This is the reason why majority of parotid tumors are superficial to the facial nerve. However, sometimes the tumors do develop and grow deep to the facial nerve or involve the nerve. The parotid is made up of multiple different cell types, which is the reason there are many types of tumors that can develop in these glands. It is very important to take a biopsy of the tumor prior to surgery in order to determine if it is benign or cancerous. Fortunately, the majority of parotid tumors are benign. The most common one is called pleomorphic adenoma. Pleomorphic adenomas are unique in that they have microscopic finger-like projections on the surface of the tumor. So when pleomorphic adenomas are removed, the surgeon must be thorough and completely get around all these projections. Otherwise, the tumor will come back after several years. The traditional parotidectomy incision, which is called a modified Blair incision, goes from in front of the ear, underneath the earlobe, and down into the neck. This surgical approach does give wide access to the gland. And for the less experienced surgeon, it is very important to use this type of incision to have greater visualization. After years of performing parotid and facial nerve surgery, we further perfected it and developed the microparotidectomy procedure. Microparotidectomy is a minimally invasive technique that involves making a very small incision starting in front of the ear and finishing just behind the ear. The skin is then elevated so that we can see the tissue beneath it. After which, we find the greater auricular nerve and protect it, which preserves sensation to the lower part of the ear and earlobe. Next is the most important part of the procedure, identifying the facial nerve, which we follow to find the smaller branches and preserve them as well. Then the tumor and the portion of the parotid that is around the tumor will be removed. Afterwards, we reconstruct the area using a muscle flap, graft, or a combination of both, depending on the patient's unique needs. This is done to fill the divot left from the tumor and make both sides of the face even. 
During the procedure, we look at pictures of the patient and the two sides of the face to make sure that the reconstruction we are doing leads to the face being symmetric. Using this reconstruction technique also adds a layer of protective tissue on top of the facial nerve and exposed parotid, which helps prevent Thray's syndrome. Finally, we proceed with doing a plastic surgery closure of the skin so that there is minimal to no scarring. If the tumor is deep to the facial nerve, then the branches of the facial nerve that lie superficial to the tumor are identified and are separated from the parotid so that we can get underneath and remove the tumor. Microparotidectomy is an outpatient procedure and patients can return home on the same day. Overall, microparotidectomy focuses on identifying and protecting the facial nerve, preserving the greater auricular nerve, reconstructing the face to be even, preventing Frey's syndrome, a very small scar, less pain, and a